Ontario Premier Doug Ford was stressing job creation today at his visit to Heddle Shipyards in Hamilton. He announced a new $3.7 million investment to help 300 shipyard workers get training for higher paying jobs. We help people by getting them a good paying job. Getting them a job that's paying anywhere from seventy dollars to $100,000 to $120,000 and higher in those cases. That's how you help people out, making sure we have a strong economy, a thriving economy, that they're going to be able to buy a home. One of the Premier's goals is to rebuild Hamilton and Ontario's shipbuilding industry. Careers in the shipyard industry include everything from welders to electricians to mechanics, but there are also inside office jobs. The Premier emphasized that 380,000 jobs go unfilled every day in Ontario. Last month's job report showed that Canada added 60,000 jobs across the country. 56,000 of those jobs were created in Ontario. And by 2026, one in five job openings in Ontario will be in the skilled trades. The jobs announcement follows yesterday's Bank of Canada interest rate hike, which is affecting many homeowners and small businesses. With regards to the small businesses uh, in particular, when it comes to the interest rate increases, is there anything that you're doing about that? Well, we've cut $8 billion of burden off of small and medium-sized businesses. For instance, WSIB. WSIB refers to the Workplace Safety and Insurance Board. Ford made the decision to have contributions returned in the form of a rebate. It amounts to a 30% cut on premiums that employers pay to the WSIB. The other critical issue is housing, and parts of the Greenbelt are at risk, despite Ford saying he has increased these areas. Since I've taken office, the Greenbelt has grown by 2,000 acres. Our government has uh, expanded the Greenbelt. Hamilton City Council has reservations about working with the Ontario government when it comes to building on the Greenbelt, among other things that the process is not transparent. Uh, Hamilton has to do their fair share just like Toronto has to do their fair share and everyone else is doing their fair share. So they're going to, uh, we're going to sit down and, and work with them, but we need homes built. Laverne McGee, CHCH News. We believe the approximate street value of these illicit drugs to be $4 million. Cops call it Project Odeon, a joint operation between Toronto, York and Hamilton Police along with OPP, targeting the illegal production of fentanyl, opioids and other synthetic drugs. It all started at this Hamilton home back in November of 2021, after police discovered a secret lab during an overdose death investigation. Investigators subsequently suspected a link between this death and an earlier overdose that resulted in hospitalization in the city of Hamilton, as well as another death at a Toronto condominium. The home where the investigation started is in a neighborhood near Upper James in the Link. There are upscale multi-million dollar homes on that street. Neighbor Vince Russo lives right next door. He says someone new has moved in since then, but remembers when police showed up nearly two years ago. When I heard that was a uh, very shock. Um, uh, couldn't believe it, but I didn't know anything about what was going on before. Police also discovered an operational synthetic drug lab in Smithville and a dismantled synthetic drug lab in Stouffville. They also recovered approximately 7,000 pounds of chemical waste, 400 pounds of chemicals commonly used in the production of fentanyl, 200 gallons of methanol, 25.6 kilos of fentanyl, and 2 kilograms of cocaine. Along with drugs, they found a loaded Glock, ammunition, and over a quarter million dollars of jewelry and designer clothing. Police have charged 12 people, including 6 from Hamilton and 2 from Stony Creek. From January 1st to July 30th, there have been 606 incidents related to suspected opioid overdoses and 89 suspected deaths in Hamilton. These numbers have been steadily rising over the past five years. I think this it does make a significant dent in the uh, availability of these drugs in the city of Hamilton, but I would say even beyond the city of Hamilton. So far, 48 criminal charges have been filed. One of those charged is a physician from Toronto named Cindy Lai. The College of Physicians and Surgeons of Ontario has been made aware of the charges. However, police are still searching for one of the suspects. A Canada-wide warrant has been issued for a 34-year-old man from Toronto. Taz, back to you. Pulse Media Network Canada has confirmed it's in talks to merge with Nordstar Capital, the owner of Metroland Media Group and the Toronto Star. The two publishers reportedly claim it will help save the newspaper industry in Canada that's long been losing advertising dollars for years. Many are concerned a deal means Canadians will have mainly one voice when it comes to newspapers across the country. 
Toronto Metropolitan University journalism professor April Lengren is watching what happens very closely. To the extent that the, the controlling proprietor wants to dictate what the editorial positions are of, of the news organization in terms of who they endorse during an election, that is obviously a risk. Post Media says the deal would ensure the Toronto Star maintains editorial independence, but there was no specific mention of smaller papers like the Hamilton Spectator. At a news conference earlier today in Mississauga, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau acknowledged concerns. This is a, a proposal that is being carefully looked at and analyzed. I know the Competition Bureau and others uh, are going to be taking looks at it because this is a, uh, a significant step. Post Media owns publications such as the National Post. They've been struggling financially for years and have a net loss of $20.8 million in the last quarterly results. They're also $275 million in debt. We know that the majority of Post Media is owned by a, a, a New Jersey-based hedge fund. Um, and the hedge fund approach to, to newsrooms is and newspapers is to basically suck as much revenue out of them as possible and invest as, in, as little as possible in, in, the, in the production of news. Post Media provided a link to a statement on its Twitter account saying in part that this negotiation is currently in the form of a non-binding letter of intent and they do not plan to disclose any further developments. Laverne McGee, CHCH News.